the frozen Sonic Mighty 4K resin printer. Let's give it a review. Hey guys, the Mighty 4K is Frozen's answer to the Elegoo Saturn and the Anycubic Mono X, and that means big prints. A quick look at the specs shows us that the Mighty slots in between these two machines, with a print height taller than the Saturn, but an inch shy of the Mono X. But an impressive 220mm or 8.5 inches means the Mighty has nothing to feel self-conscious about. First impressions are pleasing, it's a very nice look, but I instantly noticed the display screen is disappointingly small. When lit, it's crisp and clear, but I've seen larger postage stamps than this, so bigger would be better. The base feels sturdy and metallic, and the USB port is housed neatly on the side, which is where I prefer to see it. Unfortunately, there's nothing on the other side, so that means the power switch is on the back. I do find this a pain. Personally, I feel the switch should always be visible for easy access. The back also houses a fairly quiet fan, but nothing else, which means this printer lacks networking capabilities, and that gives Edigu and Anycubic something to feel smug about. With a lift-off lid removed, the printer's metallic goodies are on display, and with this printer, it's important that you don't fiddle with your knob too much as it might fall off. This one is not attached to the build plate and it remains in situ, so you'll need to grab these handles instead. It's a nice solid metal plate, big and meaty, but contoured to help shed the resin drips. I do like these handles, but they present a problem. I'm not keen on these small hex bolts. Both the Mono X and the Saturn use larger bolts with a chunkier key, and that feels better. This smaller hex key is fiddly, and, because of these handles, reach isn't ideal. Shorter handles or a bigger key would fix this issue. The Mighty has nicely spaced dual linear rails, which should enhance stability, reducing wobble for sharper prints. The resin tray is the same setup as we've seen on the Sonic 4K, with easy twist-off fixings. That means the tray must be slid carefully on and off these bolts, taking care not to damage the FEP. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as with the Sonic 4K, as the tray is much larger and, critically, it's plastic. Now, that's not a bad thing, it lightens the load and it cheapens the selling price, but it introduces a little flexibility. So be careful when fitting the tray. The screen is part of the frozen Sonic range, which means it's monochrome for longer life and faster printing. And this unit is a 4K to give a nice crisp print resolution. The box of sundries contains the usual power leads, USB stick and user manual and take care of this manual. Unusually, there's no PDF e-copy on the USB stick. In fact, there's nothing on that except a copy of G2 box and a test print. Fortunately, the postage stamp display menu does reveal good, clear instructions in proper English. Leveling the build plate is the usual piece of paper affair and the menu display and instructions manual make everything very simple. I really don't like this fiddly little hex key. Unfortunately, there's a problem here, and it's a valuable one to take note of. Pulling on the paper is easy one side and hard on the other, and that means the plate isn't leveled properly. Now, I repeated the process a few times, but I still obtain the same result. In their box of sundries, Frozen include a pathetically small piece of sandpaper, so they're letting us know that sanding the plate might be an option. And that's exactly what I did, but with a larger piece of 80 grit paper. This sat upon a small stack of mirror tiles, which I bought from Ikea. This gives me a very flat surface 
and after half an hour of steady, slow, careful sanding, I was able to refit and level the plate properly. Frozen kindly supplied me with their 4K resin, and I really like this stuff. It gets the best from their printers. I began with the usual Emerilabs test print and I was very pleasantly surprised. A truly excellent print with plenty of sharp detail. Next, as I like printing small things like jewellery, I test printed the open source hardware ring, which I've tinkered with a tiny bit and made available on Thingiverse. Again, I was very pleased. This printer can happily handle small prints. Very impressive. For a monster-sized print, I turned once again to David Eastman, a man who must surely love busts as much as I do. This chap jumped out at me, but I needed to rescale and hollow him out a bit. I will just say, I'm using the lychee slicer here, and yes, I have pronounced that properly. I reviewed this slicer recently and I found it to be a real bonus to my 3D printing. This printer comes with a copy of G2 Box, which is certainly a very good free slicer and one I used until very recently. If you're new to 3D printing, my Supports 101 video, which was made using G2 Box, may be helpful to you. I also added supports. I found these large prints are heavy and like wet paper, they can tear themselves apart under their own weight. But supports help reduce this problem. Cleaning a big print like this is a bucket and spray bottle affair, and curing is normally a problem. But Frozen have also sent me their Lunar Curing Lamp, which, according to their advertising, is the largest UV curing lamp on the market. It's very simple to use, and works every bit as well as you'd expect from a frozen product. It's a real shame it's not a wash and cure station, as any cubic have already hinted to me that they have a larger wash and cure station in development. So frozen won't have the market cornered for long. But certainly right now, this is a very useful bit of kit for those needing to UV cure large prints. And, of course, small ones too. This bust is a pleasure to handle and worthy of eventual display on a shelf. The exquisite work of David Eastman is wonderfully captured and made available by the Mighty 4K. At this point I turn to our friends over at Archville and Games and this month for their patrons they've produced some of their best work to date I think. These are truly fabulous miniatures. This chap stands at 120mm I believe, so it's not that tall but there are a lot of pieces involved and that means, normally, multiple prints. But with a large build plate like this, that's not a problem. With a little careful arrangement, I was able to print all of the pieces I needed in one go. And, as you can probably guess, these came out very well. Actually, that's a point worth making. This printer doesn't come with clippers, which I thought was very unusual. I guess it's another cost-cutting exercise, so you'll need to buy these separately. Those guys at Archville and Games can really pack some details into their miniatures, and this printer has helped bring this example to life. With a tiny bit of cleanup, this will be a truly fabulous piece. So what do I think of the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K? Well, it's a Frozen printer, 
and that alone carries some weight. There are obvious cost-cutting factors at play here. The plastic resin tray, the tiny hex bolts, the tiny display screen, the lack of networking capabilities, and the absence of that very basic but fundamentally critical tool, clippers. Here, Frozen are reducing their costs to be competitive, challenging the likes of LEQ and Anycubic by trying to make themselves more attractive to the wallet. Folks often criticise me for failing to mention the price of the items I review, but tough. I'll not state a price because prices change according to promotions, location, availability and desirability. So you'll need to shop around and get the best prices as you do your printer comparisons. But frankly, I'd be surprised if this printer wasn't undercutting the competition. But none of these cost-cutting factors take away from the overall purpose of this machine. It's a printer, and whatever your thoughts on clippers or plastic, you can't deny it prints beautifully. I genuinely can't find fault with its results. The important bits work perfectly, and the end results stand up to close scrutiny. It's a frozen printer, and it does a damn good job. It prints big, it prints small, and it prints in a way that will delight anyone. So there you go guys, the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to drop me a line below. So that's it for now guys, take care, and thanks for watching.